Thank you for joining us for a general overview of the various initiatives administered by the Federal Program Compliance Division. When we reference initiatives, we are referring to grant funded or contracted services the agency has secured to provide additional support and services to either the agency or LEAs or both. My name is Jaime Huerta and I am the Senior Division Director of the Federal Program Compliance Division at the Texas Education Agency. You will be hearing from the various program directors within our division throughout this session. Please let us know you are here by capturing the QR code on the screen and responding to the check-in questions. Please select Federal Program Compliance Division General for the event name. Then you will be prompted to enter your first name and last name, your role, there's an optional space for you to provide your email address, and then you would select LEA, ESC, or other. If you're an LEA, you would select your LEA name or type your LEA name to find your name. ESC, select ESC region number. Other, you would enter the name of your organization. In today's session, participants will gain a better understanding of the various initiatives administered by our division and the technical assistance available to LEAs from the initiatives. The Federal Program Compliance Division team includes the following team members. Didi Garcia, Lanitra Guess, Idalia Ibanez, Nez Banyawa Jimenez, Gerardo Ramirez, Victoria Rivera, and Vivian Smurl. Our approach is rooted in providing exceptional customer service to the field, um, which is inclusive of LEA staff, ESC staff, and to the general public. Therefore, we have a division contact sheet that provides you with the team members that can provide you with responses to your questions and or information related to the various programs administered in our division. You can access this document by visiting our division website or by accessing the link noted at the bottom of this slide. You will now hear from our team members as they provide you with a high level overview of the various programs administered in our division. The work we do in the Federal Program Compliance Division focuses on technical assistance, training, and program compliance monitoring of the various federal programs administered within our division. Today, we will specifically be taking a look at the technical assistance provided by external entities on behalf of the agency for the various programs administered in the division. TEA provides grant funding to all 20 regional education service centers to provide training and technical assistance to LEAs for the following federal programs. Title I Part A, Title I Part D, Title I Part C, Title II Part A, Title IV Part A, and Private Nonprofit School Equitable Services. The grants are referred to as the ESC ESA Basic Services Initiative. Later in the session, you will hear more about the specific training and technical assistance available for LEAs for each particular program. In addition to the ESC ESA Basic Services Initiative, there are various statewide initiatives that also receive funding via grant or contract to provide technical assistance, training, and resources for LEAs. For Title I Part A, we have the Title I Part A Capacity Building Initiative and the Title I Part A Parent and Family Engagement Statewide Initiative. For Title I Part C, we have the Migrant Education Program Systems Initiative, Migrant Capacity Building and Curriculum Initiative, the Texas New Generation System, the MEP CNA STP and Evaluation Initiative, and the Texas Migrant Interstate Program Initiative. And for Title IV Part A, we have the ESC Title IV Capacity Building State Initiative and the Texas Council on Parent and Family Engagement and Statewide Training Grant. Later in the session, you will hear about the specific training, technical assistance, and resources available for LEAs by 
each initiative. Program directors will now share information about each of the initiatives referenced in the last two slides. The ESC ESSA Basic Services Initiative for Title I Part A provides funding to all 20 regional education service centers in Texas. The purpose of this initiative is primarily to enable the ESCs to provide training and technical assistance for LEAs implementing Title I Part A programs, and secondarily to provide technical assistance to other ESSA programs that increase opportunities for all students enrolled in schools served by Title I Part A to meet challenging state academic standards. As part of this initiative, ESCs provide LEAs with assistance in completing the Comprehensive Needs Assessment and Schoolwide Program Plan, assistance with processes leading to the completion and submission of the ESSA Consolidated Grant Application, assistance with completing the Title I Part A LEA Program Plan, assistance with the Title I Part A Compliance Report, assistance for LEAs reporting not in compliance on the ESSA Consolidated Compliance Reports, PR 1000, PR 2000, and the Title I Part A section of the PR 3099. Assistance with completing the Title I Part A SNS methodology and Title I Part A PFE implementation requirements. In addition, LEAs may receive guidance on Title I Part A P&P Equitable Service Compliance requirements. LEAs may also receive assistance for campuses and LEAs that are selected for validation prior to the documentation submission due date. If applicable, LEAs may receive technical assistance in deficient areas after the LEA receives the validation results. Under the Basic Services Initiative, the Education Service Centers offer a variety of training opportunities to LEAs, including training for federal program directors or their designees on Title I Part A, Title I Part D, and PNP Equitable Service Compliance requirements, both in the fall and in the spring. ESCs also provide training for LEAs in Title I schoolwide campuses on schoolwide program elements, including comprehensive needs assessments, school-wide program plans, and the evaluation of program effectiveness. Other training opportunities that are offered include the Title I Part A PFE implementation requirements, the LEA program plan, and the use of TEA approved resources, including documents, websites, and best practices. The Title I Part A Capacity Building Initiative is a statewide initiative operated by staff at Region 20. The purpose of this initiative is to develop and provide services and resources for education service centers and LEAs statewide to assist in implementing Title I Part A and Title I Part D Subpart 2 programs that increase opportunities for all students to meet challenging state academic assessment standards. The Title I Capacity Building Initiative assists with the state's national Title I Distinguished Schools activities, as well as the Title I Committee of Practitioners. The initiative develops and maintains a capacity building website and collaborates with other federal programs to help align Title I Part A programs with other federal initiatives and strategies and develop tools, guidance, and training as requested by TEA. The Capacity Building Initiative plans and hosts a three-day Institute for Education Service Center staff on behalf of the Department of Grant Compliance and Administration. The initiative also coordinates and implements two Title I Part A Compliance Academies for LEAs. The initiative works with TEA to provide technical assistance and training to address recommendations or findings that TEA may receive as part of a Title I Part A monitoring visit conducted by the U.S. Department of Education. 
resources that are currently available on the Capacity Building website include a Federal Program Planner, the Title I Part A Newbie Virtual Training Series, the Collaborative Comprehensive Needs Assessment Toolkit, the Schoolwide Program Plan Administrator's Toolkit, and the LEA Program Plan Toolkit. Resources that are currently under development by the initiative include a Targeted Assistance Program Toolkit, a Title I Part A Campus Allocation Guide, and Version 2.0 of the Federal Program Planner. The Title I Part A Statewide Parent and Family Engagement Initiative is a statewide initiative operated by staff at Region 16. The purpose of the Title I Part A Parent and Family Engagement Statewide Initiative is to develop and provide services and resources for ESCs and LEAs statewide to assist in implementing Title I Part A Parent and Family Engagement requirements that ultimately increase opportunities for all students to meet challenging state academic assessment standards. The initiative provides various services and resources. For example, they coordinate the annual statewide Title I Parent and Family Engagement Conference, develop and maintain a website that includes a variety of resources, collaborate with other federal programs to help align Title I Part A Parent and Family Engagement programs with other federal initiatives and strategies, and develop tools, guidance, and training as requested by the agency, Additionally, the initiative plans and hosts virtual and in-person parent and family engagement training opportunities for LEA staff, ESC staff, and parents, and they work with TEA to provide technical assistance and training to address recommendations or findings from the Title I Part A monitoring conducted by the U.S. Department of Education. This initiative has a wealth of resources that are currently available on their website um, that can be reached by clicking on the link in the handouts um, that is shown on the screen um, with you kind of have a few screenshots of those toolkits that are referenced on the right of the screen. Um, there are five different toolkits that are available um, on their website. Uh, there's one for the parent and family engagement policies that are required under the Every Student Succeeds Act for Title I Part A. There is a toolkit on the evaluation of your parent and family engagement program, a toolkit for building the capacity for parent and family engagement and involvement, a toolkit for developing the school parent compact, and a toolkit for uh, scheduling and uh, developing your agenda and what's required as it relates to the annual Title I meeting. We will now learn a little bit more about the Texas Council on Parent and Family Engagement and Statewide Training Grant, which is a statewide initiative that's operated by staff at Region 16. The purpose of this initiative is to facilitate statewide training for the goals and objectives of the Texas Council on Parent and Family Engagement. The council is made up of parents, LEA staff, and ESC staff. Um, from across the state of Texas that advise the initiative and TEA on parent and family engagement uh, topics um, on a variety of such topics. Um, the grant facilitates and provides statewide training to ESCs and LEAs around the goals of the council, which include building the capacity of TEA to embed family and community engagement across agency priorities and federal programs, build the capacity of LEAs to meaningfully engage parents, and engage family and community stakeholders to inform the implementation of the Every Student Succeeds Act. Some of the activities of this initiative includes coordinating the work of the council, which includes uh, scheduling and coordinating the meetings and providing training to the members of the council. Additionally, the initiative plans and hosts virtual and in-person parent and family engagement trainings for LEA staff, ESC staff, and parents. They develop and maintain a PFE Council website, and they also provide training and resources to ESCs and LEAs on campus culture and teaching parents how to navigate the public education system in Texas. 
The resources that are currently available can be found on the websites referenced on the screen and also accessible via the handouts uh, for this training. Um, but specifically, I wanted to highlight the customer service and education training materials. There's a toolkit, a fold out, a lesson plan on how to develop great, a great customer service experience for parents and family members and the community um, that comes to our schools on a daily basis. Um, and additionally, there's some resources related to educator training on build, building parent relationships that's available on the site. We are also excited about a new uh, website that'll be uh, coming online soon, and that'll be the Navigating the School System in Texas um, website or web portal that's going to have a slew of information um, that is available, that will be available um, to parents um, and LEA staff um, in the state um, and whoever's on the, the World Wide Web. Hello, my name is Idalia Ibanez, and I will be providing for you an overview of the Title I Part C Migrant Education Program initiatives. First, let's begin by talking about the general program requirements for Title I Part C. Program requirements for this program can be found in the ESSA Consolidated Application Program Guidelines, Title I Part C section as well as in the program guide, program description. In addition, all migrant education program MEP grant recipients must operate and implement the program in accordance with all the provisions and assurances for Title I Part C. Some of the key program requirements include the following. The LEA is responsible for incorporating all MEP activities, services, plans, and guidelines into a migrant-specific section of the District Improvement Plan and updating it on a yearly basis. MEP activities shall address the identified and unique educational needs of migratory children that result from their migratory lifestyle. And to permit these children to participate effectively in school, in providing services with Title I Part C funds, the LEAs shall give priority to serving PFS migratory children with MEP funds before using migrant funds to address the needs of other migratory children. Identification and recruitment is key in this program since children have to be identified and recruited for the program before serving them. Migrant student data collection and data entry into the new generation system, which is a migrant student database, is crucial. Provide for advocacy and outreach activities for migratory children and their families is very important. Promoting parental participation, providing information regarding family literacy, Coordination with other available programs offering options for credit accrual and recovery. Coordinating and collaborating with sending and receiving districts and states. And conducting a program evaluation. As I previously mentioned, there are several requirements in the Title I Part C Migrant Education Program. In order to ensure that we as a state can assist you in meeting those requirements. Locally, we have several initiatives. First of all, we have all the LEAs that apply for the Title I Part C funding in the ESSA Consolidated Application. LEAs can choose to apply on, own, or through a shared service arrangement with an ESC as a fiscal agent. LEAs that do not apply on own or as part of an SSA are called non-project districts. We also have the 20 ESCs to assist you and assist in providing training and technical assistance to project and non-project LEAs in their region. They are there to support you in meeting the program requirements. We also have other state initiatives. We have 
met capacity building and curriculum through Region 20. They have the role of ensuring we have the resources needed for key program requirements, mainly for service continuity for students, parents, and staff. They have such things as early literacy resources, K through 12th education resources for migratory students and families. They also provide resources for migrant summer school services. Then we have TMIP, the Texas Migrant Interstate Program. Its purpose is to ensure continuity as students move within and out of state. Their goal is coordination with other states where migratory students and families move as migratory workers. Another initiative we have is the MEP system through Region 1. They are there to provide technical assistance and training in identification and recruitment and TXNGS, as well as many wonderful resources. That initiative includes a help desk. Finally, we have two contracts. First contract we have is through, um, and in order to ensure we have a comprehensive needs assessment, a service delivery plan, and an evaluation. Comprehensive needs assessment is to ensure that we identify what the needs of the migratory children are. These needs are then incorporated as strategies in the service delivery plan. And finally, an evaluation. The other contract we have is TXNGS. Of course, as mentioned previously, this is our state database. This vendor assists us with our state database data and also ensuring that that information goes into the national database, the Migrant Student Information Exchange. All these resources are available for you in ensuring that we are there to provide any resources and technical assistance that is provided for you. And somehow they're all connected in the TMEP portal through Region 20 to ensure that we have a common place to be able to provide all of these resources for you. I thank you so much for your time today. We hope that you find these resources very valuable. Let's cover the ESC as a basic services initiative for Title II Part A. The main purpose of this initiative is to provide training and technical assistance to LEAs that are implementing a Title II Part A program. More information can be found on the Title II Part A webpage. Examples of technical assistance include assistance completing and submitting the ESSA Consolidated Grant Application, assistance with Title II Part A Compliance Report, assistance with private and private schools, assistance with validation process if selected, as well as helping those that receive improvement need and status, and develop a web page that includes ESC staff current contact that provides such assistance. There are different types of trainings that is provided through this initiative. For example, Provide training for federal program directors on Title II Part A program requirements and use of funds in the fall and the spring. Provide suggestions for helping LES establish program compliance. And provide training on Title II Part A program requirements such as stakeholders as specified in statute, consultation, coordination, prioritization of funds, system and professional growth and improvement, private and profit school participation, and use of funds. This is an ESC Title IV Part A Basic Services Initiative Grant Summary and the ESC 14 Statewide Capacity Building Initiative Grant Overview for the Title I Part A Newbie Statewide Training. 
the 20 ESCs or recipients of a TEA ESA Basic Services Title IV Part A initiative grant. The purpose of this grant is to provide LEAs training, technical assistance, and support for Title IV Part A topics and program areas. The ESC must provide LEAs training in three content areas, the access to and opportunities for a well-rounded education for all students, school conditions for student learning in order to create a healthy and safe school environment, which is generally referenced as safe and healthy students in Texas, and lastly, access to personalized learning experiences supported by technology and professional development for the effective use of data and technology, referenced as effective use of technology to LEAs within their region. In addition, ESCs provide training for LEAs on the required Title IV Part A Comprehensive Needs Assessment with required stakeholders and ongoing consultation, guidance for districts with at least $30,000 of a Title IV Part A allocation. All LEAs are required to offer and provide, if requested, private nonprofit school equitable services for the Title IV program if the PMP is eligible. ESCs train on equitable services requirements for districts that have Title IV Part A programs. In addition, the ESC grant must schedule and conduct training for federal program directors or their designees on requirements in the fall or spring for at least three hours total to include the training topics below, the LEAs on meeting statutory requirements for objective measurable outcomes and evaluating effectiveness of activities, requirements, and processes leading to the completion and submission of the Title IV Part A LEA Special Data Collection for public reporting. Also, the LEAs on allowable use of Title IV Part A funds and compliance reports. ESCs are also required to provide technical assistance and support to LEAs within their region in the area stated. This is just a summary of the requirements that an ESC must provide. The ESC Consolidated Grant Application Support also support for LEAs completing the Consolidated Compliance Reports for Title IV Part A and School Choice Option, support and technical assistance on the Gun-Free Schools Reports, technical assistance and support in LEA Program Monitoring, which was formerly called Random Validation, program monitoring in the area of Title IV Part A equitable services for private schools, and unsafe school choice option. In addition, the LEA, the ESE, must also provide the LEA with prioritization in campus distribution of Title IV Part A funds and disseminate Title IV Part A program resources and updates. ESC 14 is the recipient of the Title IV Part A Capacity Building State Initiative for this year. The purpose of this grant in the past were, was for ESC 14 to provide statewide training, resources, guidance, and building capacity that primarily focused on only one program content area, and that was the area for school safety. The second part of their purpose from 2019 to 2024 was to provide collaboration and coordination with TEA in training, resources, support, and building educator capacity for Title IV Part A programs statewide. Many of you may have attended some of their training sessions in the past or been able to use some of their resources on their webpage. The new ESC 14 capacity building 
State Initiative Grant's purpose is to create and provide ESEs and LEA training, resources, guidance, and building capacity in the three Title IV Part A program areas for this next year. And that is going to be in the areas of well-rounded education, safe and healthy students, which they have focused on before, and effective use of technology. They will continue to provide co collaboration and coordination with TEA in training, resources, support, and building educator capacity for Title IV Part A programs statewide. Continuing with the summary of the ESC 14 Capacity Building State Initiative is the LEA statewide support. Specifically, they would assist LEAs through training resources and guidance and meeting the Title IV Part A program requirements. They also train and assist the education service centers so that they may assist LEAs throughout the state. ESC 14 also publishes online Title IV Part A training documents, tools, and resources, such as the Title IV Part A LEA Special Data Collection for Public Reporting, Evidence-Based and Best Practices Aligned to Title IV uh, T TEA Strategic Priorities, and Recommended Use of ESA Funds Guidance and Best Practices. In addition, they're continuing to provide that statewide LEA support through training and professional development. They will develop statewide programmatic resources this year, such as one pagers, best practices, frequently asked question documents, and voiced over recorded training slides, etc. They will continue to maintain the current web resources and tools and guidance that they have on their web page for state requirements and mandates that are related to the Title IV Part A program areas. The Title IV Part A Capacity Building State Initiative at ESC 14 has a web page that I have linked here. In addition, I am attaching the use of funds guidance, which is a summary diagram tool that was created in collaboration with TEA to help guide LEAs in how they may use those Title IV funds to ensure that they are using it as a supplement to uh, any state required activities. And then also I'm including the 88th legislation session, which is um, the state school safety and mental health requirements that ESC 14 presented in 2023. It's important for LEAs to review the 88th legislation slides so that you are aware of what Title IV related um, school safety and mental health requirements are so that you can supplement those with Title IV Part A resources and ensure that you do not supplant the resources. Additional questions regarding the Title IV Part A program, feel free to contact me, Lenitra Guest, Program Director of the Title IV Part A program. I'm also the private nonprofit ombudsman that works with equitable services for all programs. You may reach me by phone or email. Thank you and have a wonderful day. So this concludes the formal part of the training. Please provide us with your feedback about this training by capturing the QR code and responding to the feedback questions. Please select Federal Program Compliance Division General for the event name. Thank you for all you do for the students and families you serve every day. You truly make a difference. This concludes the training. Please reach out if you have any questions or if we can be of further assistance. Thank you and have a great day.